Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to my channel Learn in Minutes and today let's talk about oral bacteria from cradle to grave. The world of microorganisms is a mysterious one. The human body harbors 10 times more bacterial cells than the human cells with hundreds of times more bacterial genes than human genes. The microbiome has a significant influence on the mental and physical well-being of the host and the interactions between the microbiome and the host dictates health and disease of an individual. The oral cavity is no exception. It harbors many different species of bacteria providing a nutrition-rich humid environment. The association of microorganisms and the oral cavity begins right from the moment of birth of an individual. The earliest microbiota to colonize the mouth of the newborn infant is derived from the mother's genital tract, oral cavity and skin. Since the newborn has no teeth, the earliest microbial colonizers will be those that are able to adhere to the available surfaces, that is, those lined by epithelium. Within hours after birth, the sterile oral cavity becomes colonized by low numbers of facultative and aerobic bacteria. Streptococcus salivarius becomes established within one day of birth and by second day, anaerobic bacteria come into action. Within two weeks, a mature microbiota is established. Shortly after teeth eruption, more than 700 different species such as Streptococcus sanguis, Streptococcus mutans, preferentially colonize tooth surfaces. And after two years, an entire microflora which is perfectly established is formed with greater than 10 to the power of 14 microorganisms of various different types. A viscosis, which is absent in infants, gradually increases in prevalence as the child grows older. A neslundi, Vialonella species, follow a similar pattern of increasing prevalence with increasing age. Also, the proportion of facultative anaerobes and strict anaerobes increases in adolescence and adulthood. Later, with the loss of teeth in older adults, specialized environments or ecological niches such as tooth surfaces, gingival sulci, that favor the retention of certain species slowly disappear. This results in marked reduction, if not elimination, of species such as AA comitans, lactobacilli, S mutans, S sanguis, and spirochetes. By contrast, species that do not depend on the presence of teeth, example, candida, continue to thrive. Now the question that we need to ponder is, what is so special about the oral cavity in comparison to other surfaces of the body? The answer is, in the oral cavity, we have the only non-shedding surface of the body, namely teeth. Every other surface in the body is a shedding surface. So when bacteria colonize at either the internal or the external shedding surfaces, they reach a critical concentration, the cell dies, it shed off and replaced by new cells from the basal layer of the epithelium. But this is not the case with teeth, which provide hard, non-shedding surfaces that can develop extensive bacterial deposits and biofilm. Accumulation and metabolism of bacteria on hard oral surfaces is the primary cause of dental caries, gingivitis and periodontitis, peri-implant infection and stomatitis, to name a few. Therefore, the general health and the oral health is of utmost importance right from birth. We as dentists need to educate the parents to clean their infant's gums with water-soaked washcloth. This is a healthy way to stimulate gum tissue and remove food debris even before the child begins to brush. And when the teeth begin to erupt, use of a finger toothbrush should be recommended.
explaining proper oral hygiene techniques, brushing techniques, introducing oral hygiene aids such as floss, interdental brushes, etc. Stressing on the role of diet is very important to positively impact the oral health as well as the general health of our patients and their families at large. That's all for now guys. For more videos on how to maintain good oral hygiene and how to brush properly, please follow the link in the description box. Thank you.